Hello, let's understand virus, DNA and RNA. And I'll tell you later why it is important to understand. Well, virus is a microscopic organism which possesses genetic material. And this basic genetic material is inside something called a small envelope. And this genetic material could either be DNA or RNA. So we need to understand both of these two terms because virus possessing this DNA and RNA. And if you want to understand about virus, then you need to understand the internal structure of that, uh, that material. And we have this DNA and RNA for that. So DNA here is deoxyribonucleic acid. Uh, from the elementary school, you had already know, already know about the abbreviation. However, it is a nucleic acid and there is a sugar. If you see here, then this deoxyribo, it is a sugar and this is a nucleic acid. Okay, so these are the two basic uh, term. So this DNA is a two standard model and it found in all organism. When I say organism, it is living organism. Okay, so this DNA con con contains in all living or or organism uh, from animal, plant and human. So it also inside the pathogens of virus. So it is inside the virus also. So not only animal, plant and human, they also uh, is inside the uh, this viruses. It gives you a blueprint that how an organism is going to be going to be formed or made. Okay. In contrast to DNA, we have uh, this RNA, which is ribonucleic acid, and the difference between DNA and RNA is the 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 model. So here DNA is two standard model. Here the RNA is one standard model. Okay. <clears throat> You had seen the model of DNA. It is double helix structure. Uh, I'll show you that also, but just give just give you an idea that it looks something like this. So this is your DNA, and your RNA is is a single standard model. Okay, so it, it, it looks like this. So I need some something here to 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 combine it or to add it. Okay, so this is the RNA. <clears throat> so it is a one standard molecule. Well, the property that RNA differs from uh, DNA is there is one standard model and it copies and transmit the part of some genetic material. Okay, so here I had written down that it copies. Okay, so it copies some genetic code to protein. Okay, so it it it, it gives some some genetic code to this protein. And when this thing happen, your virus is going to be synthesized. Okay, it is going to be synthesized and it carry out the operation that he intended to okay so it carry out the operation in order to live develop and to multiply the family right? this is the basic property of any virus in the computer system you already know that a virus is it it could be you know it carry out the operation when it reaches to the to the to the point it is intended to so here your genetic code in computer system here i can say this genetic code is nothing but malicious source code i can write it down like this this is my malicious source code and when it reaches to the system file so when i say when i say system file it is nothing but your c drive or the operating system uh, reserved file okay so so when this malicious source code reaches to your system file the virus that is intended to it will carry out the operation and what kind of operation it possess? It will live there. Okay, you even don't know that virus is there. If it is written like in a very good uh, manner, then you never know your antivirus is not going to detect it. So that software is that code is going to be or that virus is going to be reside in the system file, and is going to develop. It get convert from virus to worm. It will multiply it. Okay, so it will multiply it and. Uh, it's going to uh, degrade your system or devastate your system. Okay, so this is the basic thing in RNA. So it is a one standard model, and when your genetic code reaches or touches to the protein, your virus is going to synthesize and carry out the operation. That means uh, it will, um, it will, um, uh, it will. What you can say? Um, your immune system is not going to, you know, um, uh, it will going to be loosened out. And ultimately, you're going to die because it directly attack your immune system. So that is the operation that this virus is going to possess there. And then uh, you you already know what will happen, right? So the you I'll 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 tell you about the discussion point 
that why we are discussing virus DNA and RNA. However, just right right now, you just understand that there is this virus DNA and RNA, and the basic difference between DNA and RNA is this. Okay. Now uh, we will understand the basic thing about DNA that what is this uh, DNA um, and its property. So here, DNA. DNA is basically consists of two polynucleotide chain and you know that what chain I am talking about. So here this is polynucleotide. Uh, I, can, I can draw in this manner. So this is my one chain and this is the another chain. So this is the two polynucleotide chain. Okay. This is coiled around each other in a, in a, in a in a double helix structure so you from the elementary school you you know this term that it is a double helix structure so it looks like helix okay so it is a double helix structure and that carry out the general information about the organism so this particular dna which is the double helix structure what it gives you it gives you genetic i need to change the color here it gives you genetic information and what kind of information it will give you it gives you something about hereditary information it gives you about the disease that you are proning or uh, going to be occurred in your body the formation and growth of your body and uh, it also gives you information about reproduction okay so these are the these are the inf these are the information that it so these are the genetic information that dna is going to give you uh, there is this term polynucleotide and uh, i can easily say that it is a nucleotide chain but when i say nucleotide it is not only one chain this is poly right there are so many uh, nucleotide chain inside dna so there are almost 13 or more nucleotide chain available uh, monomers available inside this DNA. Uh, so what is a nucleotide monomer or nucleotide chain? Uh, a nucleotide chain is is having something called as chemical energy. Okay. So it carry a packet of chemical energy. And uh, from the elementary school, if you had if you had uh, if you had gone through some of the concept of biology, then um, then we have this chemical energy in the form of ATP and it resides in the mitochondria of your cell. Okay, So mitochondria is a powerhouse of a cell which releases certain type of uh, chemical energy. You had, you had seen this kind of energy when you, when you do exercise. So this nucleotide is having the, uh, the chemical energy ATP and there are many types of chemical energy uh, available inside this nucleotide. We have ATP, GTP, CTP and UTP. They all are triphosphate. So I'll write it down here, uh, ATP, uh, CTP, uh, UTP, and then we have GTP. They all are triphosphate, okay? And these are the chemical energy that it releases uh, by the uh, by the nucleotide monomer, okay? So uh, so these uh, nucleotide uh, monomers can have one of the nucleobase, okay? So these ATP consist of ATP, CTP, UTP or GTP, they, can, they, they have one nucleobase and that nucleobase is, you know that it is C group or maybe A or T or G, okay. So C could be here in the cytosine, A could be in the adenine and G could be in the guanine and T could be in thymine, okay. So these are the nucleobase, I will precisely write it down here, these are nucleobase. So uh, one of these one of these nucleotide can possess one of the nucleobase. Okay. So the nucleotide is having these nucleobases. I will write it down here. These nucleotides. That means these these nucleotides are having these nucleobase. Then it is also having sugar and also having phosphate. Okay. And uh, uh, if you see here, sugar is also known as ribose. So I will write it down here. Sugar is, the, is also written as ribose, and you know that it is 
DNA is deoxyribonucleic, right? So it is a sugar, it is also having the sugar group. So these nucleotide chain are having nucleobase, that means C A T G. It is having sugar, that means deoxyribose, and one is phosphate group. Okay, so these are the things that it possesses. Now these nucleotides get joined to each other. These you can see these these nucleotides are joined with each other by covalent bond okay they joined with the help of covalent bond and covalent bond you you already know that uh, where we have to share one electron from an atom so these nucleotides join in a chain by covalent bond and this linkage this linkage is known as the linkage by which this this, this is joined this linkage is known as phosphodiester linkage phosphodiester linkage okay so your these, these is the, the these are the nucleotides they are uh, they are uh, covalently combined with each other with the help of this linkage phosphodiester linkage and uh, uh, also you you need to understand that these these chain are having nucleobases in this way so these are the nucleobases so i will not uh, i cannot draw uh, more nucleobases here as because I don't have the space. So these are the nucleobases and these base pairs are generally in this way. So A is, uh, A is formed with T and uh, C is formed with G. And remember that A is formed with triple hydrogen bond with a T and C is uh, uh, I mean two hydrogen bond with guanine okay so so they are these base pairs are, are are formed with the help of hydrogen bond these are formed with hydrogen bond and you can easily analyze here that a is formed with t with three hydrogen bond that means this is a strong bond and your c is a two hydrogen bond combined with this guanine that means this is a weak bond Okay, so these nucleotides are having base pairs and A is formed with T and C is formed with G. These are the things and this is uh, the DNA structure uh, in general. In visualization it looks like this. And in this chain we also had to understand that this chain uh, is a chain of sugar and then phosphate and then again sugar and then again phosphate. Okay, so it is an alternating chain. So it is also known as sugar phosphate backbone. Okay, and why we, we call this sugar phosphate backbone is because the chemical structure of DNA, if you see, then you can easily understand that uh, th th there is an alternating of sugar and then phosphate and then sugar and then phosphate. Okay, and I'll tell you what, why we are doing all these things. Uh, there is an important uh, discussion on this. I will, I will discuss that. Okay, so uh, let's also. Uh, see the chemical structure of DNA. So, uh, if I draw the chemical structure of DNA, but before that, you need to understand that if you see that the DNA structure, if it looks like this, then if you see that, and if you assume that they they work in a parallel direction, but they are parallel, then you might be wrong because they are not parallel. They work on anti-parallel. Okay, they move in anti-parallel direction. Okay, and why do we say that it is anti-parallel? Because if you separate these two helix structure and if you make like this so if this is the base of a t c g again a t c g if you see this if you see this then if i separate this out this is separated dna okay so this is one strand and this is the another strand so you can see here that this is a and then this is c and then we have again t and then we have g and then here it is T and then we have G and then we have A and then we have C like this. So this, this particular strand is this one. Okay. And this particular strand is this one. Okay. So if you separate it out, you will see that they are, they are completely anti-parallel with each other. And uh, this can also be seen with the help of uh, some label. So if I label here five dash, it is, it is written in this way only. So if this is five dash, and then here it is three dash and this strand it starts with three dash then it ends with five dash and you can easily see over here that 
that five is going to be here and then three is going to be here and then if it is like three is going to be started here and five so chemically your dna looks like this okay visually you had seen it is it looks like this but chemically it looks like this so it is having the phosphate group over here then it is connected with some with some bond with o group and then it is connected with phi ribose phosphate uh, uh, pentose sugar i'm so sorry it is pentose sugar so it is uh, phi carbon sugar and then again alternatively it is connected with your phosphate group again again it is going to be like o group and then and the chain is going to be continuously alternating like we have phosphate group and then we have uh, phi or sugar group and then we have again phosphate but in the last it is it is going to be connected with hydroxyl group so uh, it is connected with the uh, hydroxyl group like this and this is oh okay so the last is going to be the oh this is the hydroxyl group so it is the five dash standard sorry phi dash standard and uh, it end with three dash okay and the base pair is nothing but the a connected with t and then here it is c g again it is connected with a t connected with c g like uh, like this okay so it is going to be like this here the uh, the here it is phi dash here three dash then the model or the dub the 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 second standard is going to be started with, with three dash and then we have in three dash we have hydroxyl group again so i will draw hydroxyl group okay and then again it is connected with your uh, phosphate and then it is connected with pentose sugar okay and then again it is connected with with phosphate so this is the phosphate and i can i will i'll just uh, uh, say that this is the last part so this is phi dash so you can see that um, that uh, this is this so let me just change the color over here so that i can separate it out so this part here this complete part is one standard and this this part is uh, again it is the another standard okay so you can see that we are alternatively we are working so this is phosphate we have a sugar we have phosphate again and then at last we have a sugar okay uh, so again we have we started with sugar and then phosphate again sugar and then phosphate right so this is phi primer we have three pi primer we have three primer and then again phi primer right so this is the this is the talk about dna that we that we had discussed and why are we discussing all these standard is because we have a newly infectious disease you know that we have coronavirus or covid 19 uh, that is so much uh, you know buzz about uh, buzz around um, there's so much of research and development is happening in this new concept or new new and uh, new disease and uh, so i thought i have to uh, draw some conclusion or some um, a related uh, concept to discuss so you see the covid 19 is not uh, the uh, newly invented disease or newly invented virus it is basically it is there in the virology there are so many uh, uh, you know symptoms very related to other earlier diseases so this covid 19 is having one one earlier disease named as sars cov 2 okay and sars is sars is uh, severe uh, respiratory syndrome a uh, severe acute uh, respiratory syndrome syndrome and is again a uh, disease comes from china in 2002 and is very closely related to the to the covid 19 the all symptoms uh, the preventive measures even are very similar to that of this disease and you see that uh, this disease is basically respiratory disease okay they are they, the symptoms are are from, are from uh, losing your breath right and you can you already know that in uh, covid 19 also we have same symptoms we have a problem in breathing we then have a fever we have cold we have cough and then ultimately we get to the pneumonia and we lose our immune and we're gonna die right like, like that so it is very similar to that of sars and uh, covid 19 is also the uh, also on the same platform if you see the sars uh, disease it comes from the uh, the 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 specific spe specimen known as bat okay and uh, there are two bats they have the they have closely related to the, to this 
to this disease. We have C45 and C21, they have same specimen um, uh, with, with the SARS disease. And, uh, uh, and why the bat is only the uh, specimen is because bat, bat you can say it, is, it possesses uh, all viruses or you can say the pathogens of viruses. It is a house of virus, okay, having lot many pathogens inside the bat because the immune of bat is too much of capable to handle those viruses, okay. They create antibodies and antigens to deal with those viruses or newly created viruses. However, our immune system is not probably um, the best immune system uh, that can handle those viruses and that's why we, we loosen our immune and we, we die. But the thing is, is, is the COVID-19 is having one 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 earlier disease uh, or you can say the we have pre-successor of that disease we have SARS COVID-2 which again comes from China itself okay and having similarities too many similarities you cannot say they are same but there are similarities there are matches uh, that can say that um, you know COVID-2 and COVID-19 somehow uh, the very near disease and because of that reason, WHO declares that this disease, because of that disease, it's a sixth public health emergency. Uh, we have too many diseases earlier. We have H1N1, polio, Ebola, Zika. Zika is almost, it's, it, you can say it's a, it's a king of virus. Uh, it's, it's so many, you know, die on, with, this, with this virus, the Zika. Uh, however, Corona is also one of it. Uh, so it is a sixth public health emergency. And uh, the reason we discuss about virus DNA and RNA is because uh, the, the coronavirus or the COVID-19 is basically a single stranded model. That means it is nothing but a single stranded RNA. And uh, the virus that it belongs to, this coronavirus belongs to the virus known as beta coronavirus. And that is the reason we, we call it as coronavirus. Okay. So it comes from a family of virus known as beta coronavirus. And that's why we have COVID-19. And uh, there's so much of research uh, going on uh, with uh, the, the people who, who comes from biology. Uh, however, you can also be a part of those research because uh, we have deep learning, machine learning and so many other statistical analysis which can be uh, propagated with this, with, with this disease. Okay, and uh, um, and we, we, we discuss about this thing is because we have RNA and DNA, right? And uh, you had seen in the news that we uh, we had created one image or a newly created image of uh, this this coronavirus, and I'll tell you how how that image is being is being produced out uh, from the laboratory. So you see, there is a technique called as PCR. Uh, PCR is polymerase chain reaction, and it is uh, the root uh, root technique of something called as nucleic acid amplification. You know that our DNA is a nucleic acid itself, right? So this technique known as nucleic acid amplification, here I will write it down. It is nucleic acid amplification. Um, you will get the idea about this. And it is shortly abbreviated as, not shortly abbreviated, but the technique is known as polymerase, polymerase chain reaction. Okay, just like your nuclear uh, fission happens in nuclear reactors, we have um, we have chain of bombardment of those those small um, uranium uranium and um, plutonium um, um, the molecules, and because of that reason, there is a chain of fission happens in a very similar way here. The fission is about the DNA. Okay, so here your nucleic acid is going to be amplified. To a certain extent, so that we can we can test it and we can see that what kind of genetic information uh, available inside that virus. Okay, so in this nucleic acid amplification, what will happen? We have an instrument called as thermocycler. Okay, we have an instrument. Oh, sorry, this. Oh, we have thermocycler, which is an instrument. Uh, put it in, into the laboratories, and this thermocycler handles or it allows the reaction capability of um, of of any of any material okay it gives you variable temperature that can create reactions okay this instrument can can uh, can handle that so what happened actually in this in this complete process is that we take a small a small bite of nucleic acid or the dna from the microorganism okay so we'll take a small i can say here small unit from microorganism 
okay and then what we, we will do is we will put inside this thermocycler okay we'll put inside thermocycler what this thermocycler is going to do is it going to it going to separate out so these are these these are some of the points is going to separate double stranded dna to single stranded okay it will separate your double helix structure into single stranded with the help of variable temperature so it needs a temperature of about 90 90 degree uh, to 95 degree celsius okay this kind of temperature it needs to separate out your double helix structure to a single helix structure and this complete process is known as as denaturation and this is the term that uses in the PCR, the first step of PCR is denaturation by which you will uh, separate out your DNA structure into a single standard. And then what you're going to do, so if I have a double standard like this, now because of denaturation, it is here like this. Okay, so I'll write it down here, phi dash, it ends with three dash. Here it starts with three dash, then it is going to be end with phi dash. So here the single, uh, single, single standard, phi dash, three dash and again three dash five dash okay and these are the base pairs so this is a t c g like that oh, these are the base pairs here also these are the base pairs okay i hope you understand it somehow so the and i'll also create the base pairs here so these are a t c g like that so these are a t c g and like that okay so because of denaturation this happens and around uh, 90 degrees celsius this happens okay and then what we're gonna do is we will apply something called as add primer to it and primer is nothing but if if i have this complete dna and if i want to see this part only this section only then then i will add and if i if i just uh, you know uh, this complete dna is going to look like this now so if i need to inspect only this section then what i'm going to do is I will add a primer over here okay and this primer can be can be added at a degree of 50 degrees celsius we have to pull down our thermocycler and then we will add this primer and primer is nothing but a small sequence of dna okay and a small sequence of dna so here in this location i'm going to add one primer so your primer is going to look like this so this is the this is the primer and primer is flanked to the targeted section so this is my target section that i want to inspect then you have to add your primer over here okay in a very similar way in this strand also if there is a particular section you want to inspect then add the primer here and primer is a small section of your dna itself it is flanked to the target nucleic acid sequence and this complete step is known as annealing where you have to cool down to a temperature of 50 degrees celsius and then what we're gonna do inside this this annealing after this annealing uh, we we will add here we will add something called as tech dna polymerase not this tech just remove it we need something called as dna polymerase and what this dna polymerase is going to do it is it is nothing but an enzyme oh just understand that it is nothing but a catalyst okay in a biological term this is this is catalyst nothing else it will it will generate or it will it will generate new complementary copy of target nucleic acid so that, that means if i'm adding here the primers if i'm adding so i'll draw it down here again so if this is the sequence and uh, if this is the target section only and if i'm adding some primer over, uh, sorry if i'm adding yes if i'm adding some primer over here then i have to add the dna polymerase after this so this is my DNA polymerase here. Okay, so this is the DNA polymerase. And what this DNA polymerase is going to do, it will forward it. Okay, it will it will replicate. Okay. All these ATCG is going to be replicated over here. Okay, it will forward it. It forward it or reverse it depends upon your your these primers, 5 dash, 3 dash. Okay. So here also in 3 dash, 5 dash. If you are if there is a dna polymerase over here and this is your primer then uh, then it's going to be forward or it is going to be uh, uh, reverse okay and this this property of dna polymerase is going to known as extension here what you are doing 
you are extending your DNA okay you you only have a target sequence over here but you are extending your DNA uh, to uh, to a larger extent okay so now there is not, not only one copy there there are many copies of that so here in this whole process it's a one process of PCR okay this is the one complete cycle of polymerase chain reaction and uh, we have to repeat repeatedly do it okay when you several times you have to do it in the thermocycler and once you do it uh, you will get the copies of newly created DNA fragments okay now you don't have only one DNA but you have million copies of that DNA and you can inspect it in individually or you can have some target section on DNA and then you can inspect it okay so after each cycle you will the newly synthesized DNA that you are getting here after each cycle the newly synthesized DNA you are getting that could be the new target for the next cycle okay just like your linked list so here is an example of this complete PCR this is PCR here you see we have a DNA sequence here three prime five prime three prime five prime and then you are doing something called as denaturation where you are uh, removing the double standard into single standard so this is one strand this is another strand and you are adding p2 and p1 these are the primers in the annealing method at 50 degrees celsius as i told you so you you add this primer over here it's a small uh, sequence of dna itself you are combining it here adding it and then you are doing extension with the help of dna polymerase you are adding dna polymerase over here so that this strand you, you can see here it is duplicated or replicated here and it is going and is moving forward moving forward so they are creating new dna fragment over here in this extension okay so now there is no not only one single standard dna but there are multiple dna copies here okay millions of copies available and you can you can use it for further uh, what you can say uh, testing and uh, to get to get to the things okay and something called as a result and analysis or conclusion of the things uh, so now uh, these new dna fragments how can you how can you how can you see these dna fragments there is a specific technology we we, we call it as gel electrophoresis and uh, i'll write it down here it's a it's a gel electrophoresis actually actually it is agarose gel electrophoresis however this is gel electrophoresis with the help of this technique uh, you can see the new dna fragment or any other uh, you know a, a, a technical observant that you want to you want to see you can see in this gel electrophoresis so uh, the new covid 19 virus that you had seen the first image of that virus that you had seen you can see over here that this is the this is the so, so this is the this is the image of the first coronavirus you can see here this is the covid 19 the first image that you get from pcr uh, not pcr but let's say this is pcr and uh, it, 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 the, the dna fragments you get is from agarose gel electrophoresis you had seen right so uh, this is the whole technique by which they grabbed this image of coronavirus and uh, now it is now another perspective over here now uh, why we are not using pcr over here uh, uh, what is the role of rna then so as i told you that coronavirus or covid 19 is a single standard RNA comes from a virus family beta coronavirus then uh, why why we are using DNA here actually we need to use RNA that's correct actually we haven't used PCR technology to get the, the get the image of this this uh, this coronavirus uh, 19 or 2 uh, but we had used something called as uh, a reverse reverse transcript uh, PCR technology or polymerase chain reaction rt dash pcr that we had used to get that image and why because pcr is generally a dna amplification technique well i don't need dna amplification i need rna amplification or i need to convert some somehow so i need to convert my rna to uh, dna and then i have to use the pcr so in order to do uh, or in order to convert this rna to dna we have to do something called as reverse transcription and then i have to apply the pcr okay uh, so and uh, why why are we doing this whole thing is because if you see if I get only the uh, if I uh, why why we have adopted this PCR technology is because uh, I cannot I cannot cultivate okay I cannot cultivate this virus uh, in the laboratory it is hard for me even if I cultivate it it will take very long time it is a time consuming process it will take days months i don't know uh, years uh, but it is hard to uh, cultivate that virus but
but instead if i want to see uh, how virus is formulating and how it is going to uh, work then i can use something called as pcr where i need a minuscule part of that virus and then i, I can create million copy of that virus and then i can analyze it effectively because i have the target section of my dna and then i can effectively target that section only to inspect to analyze it okay and that is the reason we have used this this digital technology this polymerase chain reaction instead of cultivating that complete virus in the laboratory it's hard for me however uh, this pcr will give you definitely false uh, negative and false positive uh, that cultivation is really useful there but it takes time and you know that uh, with a rate that 14 lakh people is affected with covid 19 uh, i don't think that i can i can use this cultivation a time to uh, i mean cultivate the virus it's going to be going to be take much time and i don't have that kind of time right so that is the reason we have we have this pcr and how exactly i can use this rt pcr to detect covid well see uh, that what i'm going to do is if a person okay if i'm right now i'm using rt here okay so i'm using rt pcr which stands for reverse transcription reverse transcription which is um, i mean well, let me just write reverse transcription pcr okay here i am converting my rna to dna in order to get the uh, genetic information from the virus so what i'm going to do is if i have a patient with uh, coronavirus uh, infection then i need to collect some of the samples from his body uh, as i told you that covid is a respiratory not respiratory but it affects your respiratory organs uh, probably your lungs and uh, throat and itself so i can collect some of the samples from the from the from the body where coronavirus gathers so it generally gathers in the nose uh, sputum sputum is nothing but cough uh, throat so i will collect some of the things from your nose or from throat and then what i'm gonna do is i will i have to clean it okay i have to clean that sample it just like your data set you have to pre-process it before modeling it uh, uh, i have to clean the samples okay so uh, and why are we cl cleaning it is because we have to remove the substance extra substance like we have protein we have fat and other um, um, other substances i have to remove it because if i do that then pcr is going to give me false positive false negative i mean the result that i don't want it okay and th th that's why i need a uh, i need a i need a, a clean sample okay so i have to remove it and then what i'm going to do is um, uh, if that body is having the the coronavirus then definitely the, the, uh, we have rna and uh, your rna is basically mixed with the genetic material to your dna okay so in the human body now the 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 person who is having so this person is having uh, corona so it is having rna plus the the dna the human dna okay so there is a viral dna and then a, then there is a, an rna okay then what i'm going to do is then rna is going to be reverse transcript to dna okay i'm converting my rna to dna so your rna is going to be reverse transcript to dna then then you will do the actual uh, you know the uh, the pcr technique that you had done you will add a primer and then you will annealing it and then you will extend it uh, and then you will see that um, after each cycle the the copy of viral dna is going to be uh, is going to be formed so this this uh, the viral dna copy uh, it is important for me okay so I'll, you will run your thermocycler to around uh, 35 cycles so uh, every cycle if it gives you 1 billion copy then 35 cycles will give you 35 billion new copies of viral dna and the, these viral and that's huge i think that num that huge number will definitely give you some concrete idea about the, the this new infectious disease and that's why we had created it right and then if i have the you know 35 billion new copies of viral dna then how can i understand that this is this is the virus so what i'm going to use what i'm going to do is i'll use something called as labels okay labels in that dna strands uh, and that label is nothing but fluorescent dye uh, so that means if the fluorescent increases in the in the in the monitor screen uh, digitally you are seeing that graph if the fluorescent increases that means virus is present okay if fluorescent is doesn't increase that means virus is not not there in the body i mean the coronavirus 
patient positive uh, case and the negative case like that. So, if the fluorescent, fluorescent is increasing, then it means that virus is present. If it is not increasing, that means it is not there uh, in the body. And that uh, that increment, if this happens in few cycles only. So, right now my thermocycle is in like 35 cycles. I'm, I'm, I'm moving it. But if let's say the fluorescent increased uh, like in two or three cycles, that means th there is a more severe infection in the body. Okay, that is also very important analysis that if you, my thermocycle uh, gives me fluorescent increment within two or three cycles, that means I am more, uh, you know, uh, severe to that infection, the coronavirus infection. And uh, I have the reverse transcription over here. You can see here that uh, this is the RNA single stranded model here, double stranded model here. And I'm adding some primer and then reverse transcript it. You can see here. And then I'm using PCR technology, the same technology, and I'm amplified it. I have a larger number of viral DNAs and I can inspect it and because of that reason I get this 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 picture you can see so this technology is adopted by many of the laboratories even India had adopted it and had created the first image of coronavirus I hope you somehow understand it uh, thank you so much for listening to me